So if you're watching this video, it's because you want to learn how to edit portraits in Lightroom. My name is Samuel Peter. I'm a street photographer slash portrait photographer, and I'm going to show you in today's video how I edit portraits in Lightroom. And if you're coming here from my Instagram, well, it's because you like my style, you like the tones in my photos, and you kind of want to learn how I do it. So. I'm gonna go over all of that today. Now, for this tutorial, I will assume that you already have some kind of knowledge about how to use Lightroom, so I won't go into too many details. I will just talk about how I make the changes that I make and why I make them. All right, let's get started. So right now I have this portrait of this lovely lady that I met in Ren. Okay, so I'm gonna go here to the basics, right? So this is where I'm gonna start. The first thing I have to do is set the white balance to auto. Right now, of course, the best thing to do is to shoot with the right white balance from the get go. But sometimes, you know, things happen and we might have the wrong settings. So what I like to do is set the white balance to auto. It usually does a good job. Now, what I'm going to do is play with those settings a little bit, right? I'm going to lower the highlights to around, uh, I don't know, let's try 82. Yeah that works. I'm going to raise the shadows a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to lower the whites, say negative 59. Yeah, that works. Now I'm going to lower the blacks also. So I get something that's pretty dark. So as you can see, it's really a question of going in each settings, right? And playing with the sliders until you find something that you like. In my photos, I tend to lower the whites, lower the darks, really have kind of like a, um, almost an underexposed look to the photo, right? With the face of the subject being the brightest thing in the image most of the time. And you'll see later in this uh, tutorial, I'm gonna go in and even darken the background so that the subject can pop out even more. What I'm gonna do is I think I'm just gonna raise the exposure just a bit. Okay, that's a little bit too much. Uh, so instead of 44, there's a 24. Oops, a 24, but 0 0.24. Yeah, yeah, that should work. And what you can do, you can even click here. So what I also like to do is have the before and after, right? Just so I can kind of track the changes that I make and see what pleases me and what doesn't. All right, let's keep going. Now I'm gonna to move to the texture, okay? And what I like to do is raise the texture to add a lot of details to the photo. So I'm gonna raise the texture. I'm maybe gonna zoom in a little bit so that you can see. See, if I lower the texture, it really makes the, it gives the, the photo smooth look. But if I raise it, then you get back all those details in the photo. So I'm gonna raise it to around 50, not too much. Perfect. And the clarity, I'm going to use it to make the exact opposite effect. All right, so I'm going to lower the clarity to smooth, smoothen the image a little bit. Because I feel like clarity does a better job of smoothing the image than the texture does. So the clarity, I'm going to put it at around, uh, say, negative 20. Yeah. And if you look at the before and after, you see? I really like where this is going. Now the dehaze, I don't really use it a lot, right? If I raise it and lower, you can see what it does, right? So I don't really use this a lot. I'm probably gonna put this around five. Yeah, it's a little bit more con contrast. I like to use the vibrance instead of the saturation because the, the vibrance, it, it makes the colors pop even more, I think, right? But I don't raise it too much. I think the vibrance, I'm just gonna have it around, maybe around eight, yeah. Okay, now we got the basic settings done, okay? White balance, exposure, highlight, shadows, texture, clarity, all that. So right now we're gonna move down to the tone curve, okay? And what I'm gonna do here is I'm really gonna play with the settings here. Now, there's many different ways that you can go about this, right? You can make a, some sort of S curve like this, okay, to add contrast to your image. Um, but the way I do it is a little bit different, right? I mostly use the region settings right here, starting with the highlights. Okay, so the highlights are gonna have them at around 30, because I like to raise my highlights. Yeah, around there is fine. Yeah, around there is fine. Okay, and now the, now the lights. The lights is really the intensity of, well, the lights, right? So if I lower it, you can see, 
you know, it kind of lowers the intensity of the lights. And if I raise it, then it raises the intensity of the lights. Now, this depends on the photos, right? And on some photos, I might raise it. Some photos, I might lower it. In this photo, I think I'm going to lower it just, just a bit, right? Negative five. Okay. Now, the darks and the shadows, I'm going to cover that. So the darks, I like to raise them because if I lower them, in my opinion, it gives a muddy look to the image. And I don't really like that. So I'm going to um, raise the darks just by a little bit until I find something that I like. Yeah, I think 14 is fine. And the shadows, I'm going to lower them just a little bit. Perfect. If you go, if you do before and after, you see, it's a little change, but it's all those little changes that you make when they add up together, it creates a beautiful image in my opinion. All right. Now the color mixer. Okay, so the color mixer, I'm gonna go through it and kind of like show you for the you, the saturation and the luminance, what I like to do. Now I don't play a lot with these settings because it it can be, it's, it's really easy to mess something up and then end up with like purple skin or green skin or something like that. Now, unless you're trying to go for a, a look where your subject looks like the Hulk or Thanos, I don't think that's, something you want to mess with a lot right so usually the tones that i mess with are usually the yellows the greens uh the blues sometimes the aqua All right so for the u what i like to do is raise the yellow just a bit say it's around uh, 15. Uh, i'm also going to raise the greens actually no, i'm going to lower the greens to a see if you see i lower the green see what it does because green is not a color that I like to have in all my portraits, right? So I'm just going to lower it, but not too much. So around negative 19, that'll do it. Now for the saturation, right? So the saturation, I'm going to lower the yellows by around 50. Perfect. I'm also going to lower the greens. So as you can see, I'm often playing with the greens and the yellows okay if you do before and after you see it's taking away in this background all the yellows and the greens all those colors that can kind of like uh, distract from uh, the subject right so i'm taking away all those colors and i'm also going to jump down to the blue and kind of lower it but just a tad all right, now luminance. Luminance is basically um, how bright each color is in the image, right? So here, I'm just gonna touch the yellow and the green, right? So if I raise it, you can see that, you know, the parts that were yellow, it raises them. Actually, that's not a bad look. Huh. But for this image, I'm going to lower uh, the yellows to 30. Yeah, 30, that looks fine. And the greens, I'm going to lower them also. 27, yeah, that works, that works. Okay, now let's look at the before and after. Four, after. Okay, now we're gonna jump down to the color grading, right? So for the color gradings, you have your shadows, your mid-tones, and your highlights. So I'm gonna go through each of them one by one and kind of explain to you um, how I use them, right? So I always start with the shadows. Okay, now for the shadows, I like to have a U that's uh, kind of like in the greens, you know? So, yes. So I like to stay in between the blue and the green, right? So sometimes I'll be there. Yes, say uh, 147. Yeah, that'll work. 149, right? And the saturation, I like to bump it up just a tad. Perfect. Now, the shadows, what you can do, you can really play with it and see what colors you want to have in the shadows. I know most people, they put blue in the shadows. Some people put a little bit of um, orange in the shadows, right? But I like to stay in between um, the green and the blue. For the shadows i think i might put this at 147 even yeah okay and the lumen the luminance i'm gonna put it i'm gonna raise it just a bit so if i lower the luminance here you can see that it really crushes the, those colors and so I, I almost never lower the luminance right but here i'm gonna raise it to around 
10. Let's try 13. Perfect. All right. So that's the shadows. Now let's move on to the midtones. All right. So for the midtones, what I like to do is move the hues to an orange hue, right? Because the midtones is really like the skin and everything that has to do with the face in most cases. So what I like to do is leave it in like the, the red or just between the red and the orange. Or I guess the, the yellow, the red and the orange, right? So the saturation, I'm also gonna raise it to 13. Look at that. I'm gonna leave the luminance, right? And the highlights, what I'm gonna do is, um, is move the hue to, yeah, to around 20. Okay, so we have uh, some warmth in the highlights also. And I'm gonna raise the saturation to not a lot, just 10. Now, the highlights, you can play with it and you can have some uh, blue in the highlights too if you want, right? To add some contrast. But uh, for, for my uh, image, I'm gonna leave it at red. Most people, I see they put it in the blue, but red is kind of like the look that I am going for. So I'm gonna leave it at that. If we do the before and after, boom, before and after, right? So right now we have something that's pretty good. Now the blending and the balance here is also something you can play with. I usually don't touch the, blend, the blending, but if you lower it and raise it, you can see kind of there's a little bit of a difference, but I usually don't, um, touch it as much but the balance i tend to raise it just a bit right if i can lower it sometimes but most of the time i lower it i mean i, I raise it just a bit say yeah tell the do so as you can see i'm going for a very warm uh feel like a very warm look in my uh portrait well in this portrait at least all right now we're going to jump down to the details all right so for the sharpening, I usually don't touch this. These are usually the settings that I like, but what I will go to is add some noise reduction, right? So let me zoom in so you can see this a little bit, or actually zoom in a little bit more like this. Um, if I raise it all the way, I almost never raise it all the way because it kind of looks unnatural, right? It kind of, it almost looks AI-ish. So what I will do is most of the time, put it at, at least 50. Right, so it the the noise reduction in Lightroom is so good that it almost it's good at lowering the noise in your image without making it look like you used a noise reduction. I'll just put it like that. And for the rest of the settings, I usually just leave it at that. Now for the effects, what I like to do is add a very small amount of vignette. Right, so very small just like negative five just a little bit of vignette and now let's move to the calibration now the calibration um it's very fun but it's easy to get carried away right you have the u the blue primary the green primary the red primary and the shadow right the blue primary if you can see here see it kind of gives you like a uh orange and teal look i don't like this look so i don't use it. Most of the time I use just the shadows, right? And for this photo, I'm gonna raise it a little bit so that it adds even more to this warm look that I'm going for. If you put it towards the green, you see it kind of has the opposite effect, right? But I'm going to leave it at 18. I put it at 19. All right, okay. Let's do before and after. And this is what we've created so far. And we're almost done now. This is the secret to having great edits in Lightroom, and that is masks. You have to use masks, right? So if you go in Lightroom and you click this button right here, then it opens up the masks, okay? You have subject, sky, background. So basically you can select individual parts of the model's face. You can select the background, you can select the hair the clothes, the hands, right? And you can edit those different parts of the body individually. What I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is show you how I use it. So the first thing I do, right, is I always start with the background. 
So I click on background. So right now what it's going to do is it's going to select the background. Perfect. I'm going to lower it. I'm going to lower it by uh, lowering the exposure. Now it's don't overdo it because it gets unnatural if you overdo it like this, right? But I always like to um, lower it just a bit, right? I tend to stay under negative one because if you go past negative one, well, sometimes it'll get unnatural. So maybe, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Four, after. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add I'm gonna create a new mask, right? I'm gonna create a radial gradient and I'm gonna select the face right here. Perfect. It even shows you uh, the, the mask that you've created in red. So right, right now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, raise the exposure of the face, okay? And the goal of this is to make the face pop from everything else in the, uh, in the image. And if we lower, the brightness of everything else but the face then that's another that's a good way of making the face pop up so right now what i'm going to do is raise the exposure of the face perfect perfect also might we raise the whites a little bit too perfect four and after and to make the face pop up even more what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate and invert that mask so it's gonna duplicate it and it's gonna invert it. That means it's gonna select everything but the face. And then I'm going to lower everything. Boom. Yes, I might even lower the whites a little bit. So now if you do before and after. And then that's basically the same process that I would use for my portraits, right? And as you can see, the masks is the is the cherry on the cake it, it really is essential for a great edit right so now you can even go in maybe you know do some changes right i might actually raise the highlights a little bit right yeah uh so now you can just go in and do some more fine tuning you know um until you find a look that you're satisfied with if we go and do the before and after as you can see it's really beautiful uh final image now this is one of the ways that i edit my photos right all photos are different so i'm not going to use the exact same process for each of my photos right but this is kind of like the idea of what i try to go for whenever i'm editing a portrait but that is it for this video i hope you found it interesting I hope that you've learned something from it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will try to answer them in another video. Photography is my passion and my goal is to prove that everybody is photogenic and everyone is beautiful. So if you want to watch that, make sure to go to my shorts page. I'll leave a link in the description. Follow me on Instagram at Newman Photographs. There will also be a link in the description. And I'll see you in the next one. Keep creating, stay beautiful, and God bless you.